iron, so it's kind of in this oven, protected. Um, so <coughs> once it start, starts trickling down, and we call it raining iron, because you can actually, when you look through the twir hole, you can actually see it starting to drip. And when it first starts, it's like really globular, because it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And then it starts like really running and dripping down. And then when it slows dripping, it means that you know the iron that you have in there is mostly melted. Um, so between that and the slag hole, um, we know when to actually tap the furnace. And I mean, you can also do it just from how much you're putting in as well. Um, but uh, so then we break open the the bot with a spike, and then. It, Gushes out and pours into a ladle. Thank you, Josh. I feel very unprepared. Um, so you have the ladles here, and we'll, I don't know how many. Can you like three? Yeah, at least four. Yeah. Three, four, yeah. Um, and so we'll just kind of tag team. You know, hmm. so one will pour in, and then the next person will go. And then with this, you can see there's a pour, like a spout that you can actually just pour pretty easily into the, the sand molds that you guys are making. So, which will be laying right here. Which yeah. will be laying right here, and so we'll just go really low and mm -hmm. pour it really easily, and we not get iron all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and because they're open face molds, they actually cool really quickly, so we'll be able to break them out within an hour oh, after yeah. lunch. Yeah, after nice. lunch is what we do. The very first thing uh, that's very important about uh, anything related to uh, metal casting, uh, iron pouring, foundry, is that you got to look good. You get all dressed up in leather and you look good. That's what it is. But Lori. I did not know I was volunteering for this. <laughs> Lori is in her own leather jacket. She looks Yay. good in this leather jacket. She's got flames sewing on there. So if you do this long term, you gotta look good. Can you do a little walk on Santa? I got a big long coat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gorgeous mustard color. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly dirtying it up, which is really cool. Um, all right, so. One thing before you put on the gear, you do not want any synthetic materials on you because you will, it will melt to you. So you want to use all natural materials. Cotton. Cotton, please. Um, okay. This is my gear that I wear. These are uh, riding chaps. I got brown ones so I don't look like the village people. Um, <laughs> when you wear chaps to do iron casting, you look and feel good. And you're also very safe. Um, iron is, is really hot, but uh, when it comes out of the furnace and if it splashes on you, it'll cool off really fast. And what you want to do is really prevent that uh, couple of few moments where it goes from a liquid to a solid state. Um, and what we're wearing is not so much for uh, radiant heat protection, but splash protection. Mm -hmm. So you'll be wearing things like uh, spare spats that's been through the <coughs> ringer a couple of dozen times. You can see all the splash on there. Where are those though? Mm -hmm. Spats. Oh yeah, on your feet. Yeah. That's why I wear, I wear chaps, like a full legging. Uh, Lauren has leggings. Um, these are perfectly fine. Uh, things that are leather, Kevlar, non uh, non combustible materials, uh, cotton is okay, wool is fantastic. Um, you'll be wearing these Kevlar sleeves that help prevent dingleberries from going down your glove. Um, if you do get splashed with iron and uh, you're wearing, like you said, uh, something synthetic like uh, uh, polyester, polyester a pair of like cotton pants might catch on fire, but then you can pat out the fire and all the heat dissipates really quickly. And with uh, synthetic materials, you've just melted all that plastic and uh, the heat doesn't go away as well and will tend to stick to you and continue to burn you afterwards. You have to be smooshing melting plastic up here, right? Right. Um, right. For the most part, the areas that we're really concerned with are um, you know, your face with a face shield, uh, hands and gloves, and your feet. Your feet are very important because the metal is very, very heavy, and uh, if anything does happen, it's usually going to end up you know, sort of below decks around this area. 
Um, so you want to make sure you're wearing something that's not going to allow the middle to find a little spot in between your, your laces there and kind of hang out. Uh, you don't want to go down your, your shoe. Um, your boots are awesome, so you'll probably cast. <laughs> your boots are awesome, and who else has leather shoes on? Have you have pretty good shoes. Those are pretty awesome shoes. So let's see, that's one, two, three. What about cowboy boots? Yep, that'd be fine. Uh, you want to have a system where the uh, pants are on the outside uh, and so they don't uh, provide a nice little cup for the middle to fall into and stay. Uh, so something like that. Um, Josh, can you add? I yeah. mean, if you're all thinking that you have to do this, you don't. What you are really doing are the scratch tiles, and there'll be a, few, a smaller number of you who would actually cast. But what Josh is telling you is if you desperately want to do this, these are the rules how you have to come prepared. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, what are the other parts? People wear uh, safety glasses. Safety glasses. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even wearing my right shoes, sorry. <laughs> put those on. Uh, you can put those on. Uh, we have a bunch of aprons here that are uh, really great to use for um, if you don't have a wicked long, expensive uh, coat. Um, a bunch of leather jackets, we'll put those on. And you will be uh, totally covered head to toe with leather and essentially splash proof, which would be really good. What are those straps made of? They are made out of something made in China. <laughs> <laughs> but they're hidden anyway, so usually yeah. under your yeah, jacket.